Microbrewer Podcast, Session 39. Welcome to Microbrewer Podcast. Going deep to get inside the craft beer industry and inside the heads of people who work there. Here's your host, Nathan Pierce. Welcome to Microbrewer Podcast. We talk about everything craft beer related with a focus for people looking at starting their own microbrewery or wanting to take their existing brewery to the next level. And I'm your host, Nathan Pierce. Thank you for listening. If you haven't already, please subscribe, rate, and review Microbrewer Podcast in iTunes or Stitcher. There are easy links to find them at microbrewer.com slash iTunes and microbrewer.com slash stitcher. And please also go to the website. The, there's a page to support microbrewer at microbrewer.com slash support microbrewer. There's some really easy ways that you could just support microbrewer and microbrewer podcast. For example, number one on the list is to subscribe, rate, and review. So check this out. If you leave a comment in iTunes, if you leave a rating and review in iTunes, you'll get a chance to win Microbrewer Podcast Bar Coasters. I have more details after this episode, so be sure to listen to the very end and find out how you can enter. There are some really specific things that you need to do so that I know that you left a review. In this episode, I talk with Kyle Roth from Ferndock Brewing Company in Sandusky, Ohio. You know, in episode 26, you could check that out at microbrewer.com slash session 26. We talked with Paul Benner from Platform Beer Co. They have a, an incubator program. <clears throat> so... Today's guest, Kyle Roth, is the first person to go through that incubator program. And I wanted to follow up to see, we heard from Paul before the program about his brewery and whatnot. And he gives us some details about the apprenticeship going through the incubator. And now we hear from Kyle, who is just about finishing up the program. And he and his partners are getting ready to branch out and start their own brewery. So for more info, there's some other links that I added about more details about this podcast episode. They're at the show notes at microbrewer.com slash session 39. Here's the interview. Hey, Kyle, I introduce you to the listeners. Let's take a few minutes and you could tell us more about you and your brewery. Sounds great. Thanks. Uh, yeah, my name is Kyle Roth, and I'm from Ferndock Brewing Company. Basically, right now, we are in an incubator program at Platform Brewing Company here in Cleveland, Ohio. We're looking to launch our brewery uh, here within 2015 in Sandusky, Ohio. And uh, learning all the ins and outs as far as insurance, uh, accounting, brewing tasks, and all that sort of thing through Platform and their incubator program currently. Yeah, that's how I learned about you, because you're the first one through their incubator program, right? That is correct. Uh, it's been a very good learning process, a lot of hands-on uh, brewing and getting to know what's going on at the brewery itself as far as sitting in on uh, marketing meetings every Tuesday and going over some of the numbers and what's coming in and what's going out and all that sort of thing. So it's not just the brewing side, uh, it's it's all of the tasks and business that go along with brewing as well. So how did you find out about Platform's incubator program? I worked with Paul. He came to Cleveland a few years ago and he opened a home brew store called the Cleveland Brew Shop. And as soon as he moved to town, we kind of connected at one of the local competitions, uh, son of Brewzilla at Fathead's Brewing Company. And from there, we kind of formed a relationship. I told him I was a web designer and worked on his website for the Cleveland Brew Shop. And then from there, we kind of just kept sharing uh, beers, you know, home brews. And as he developed this 
concept of platform, he told us that he had us in mind all along when he was forming this uh, concept of the incubator. And when he was launching it, he asked us, would you like to be the first participant? And we didn't want to turn him down on that opportunity. Yeah, I had the opportunity to talk with Paul Benner in Microbrewer Podcast episode 26. And he told us that they're planning on doing this really uh, rigorous application process and they already had a bunch of applications in. So you guys didn't have to go through that tough stuff, huh? Um, I'm not that I'm aware of. <laughs> he, uh, he pretty much asked us and here's the terms and we agreed. And, uh, right now they're taking applications for the next participants that will be going through the program starting in, uh, early 2015. So perfect. So you guys are the special first case in (laughs) yes and from here you know i'm sure he's learned a few things about how the process is going to go and um we're gonna hand off the mash paddle to the next participants and 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 probably play a role in in helping formulate uh what's gonna happen uh with with that as well so when did you start the program we started the program it was in September, kind of just getting the orientation and, and shadowing Sean Yasaki, who is the brewmaster at Platform, and uh, just kind of learning the ins and outs of this, of just how to take care of some of the things within the brewery, uh, the cellar work and, and that sort of thing. Um, and from there, uh, we went into the, the different modules. Uh, one of the modules was working with uh, uh, the marketing side, branding, which with my day job, I, I kind of had some of that knowledge already. Um, so that was there was less focus applied to that, uh, more so on the business side and getting numbers together and the business plan. And, and uh, we've already been connected with uh, investors and uh, we're close to signing a lease on our location. And so this process without this, without platform, we wouldn't have been able to, uh, come to this point in, in our brewing, uh, hopefully professional brewing company, uh, as fast as we did. So it's, you started in September. It's just like a couple months and you're nearing the completion now. That's correct. It's, it's a 12 week program. Uh, but it's kind of, it's been loose, as far as what gets scheduled when a lot of it depends on what they're brewing in house, when they're going to move something into the serving tanks and um, that sort of thing for the, the brewing side. And then some of it is, you know, there's an obligation on our side to be able to perform hours in the brew house that are during normal work operation uh, time. So, you know, getting a day off of work and, and, and scheduling things in and that sort of thing. So it was kind of a uh, choose your own adventure, uh, just making sure that when I'm going to be there, that Sean's doing something or Paul's able to meet to talk about the business side or uh, some of the other consultation that happens, uh, making sure those consultants are there to be able to meet up. So basically it's a day a week, I would, I would say. Um, in some weeks there's more things going on than others. Uh, but there is the uh, the need to be able to have a little bit of a flexible schedule to be able to uh, participate in the program. Kind of show up when something's happening so you could learn how to do it. Exactly. And like, uh, so from there, we went into a brew session. Uh, we sat in, shadowed Sean on brewing uh, New Albion uh, Pale Ale, uh, which is deemed the first craft beer, uh, basically... Jack McAuliffe's daughter, who is the original brewmaster on that beer, uh, she lives in Cleveland, and now she's reinventing and relaunching the brand here under Platform. That uh, They have a contract through Platform to brew the beer for them. So we sat in and uh, brewed that with Sean, and then from there we scheduled our own brew session. So we actually brewed our first recipe was entitled Sandusky Pale Ale, and that's the beer that we've won a lot of awards on. So we thought that would be the one to start, uh, with at, at platform. And we brewed that in 
middle of October. We just had the launch party a couple weeks ago, and we brewed six barrels. And it's there's I think there's one keg left for this week, so it went pretty fast. We had a lot of people that were interested in seeing what was going to come out of platform uh, with the incubator program, and so with that launch party, we went through a lot of that initial batch of beer. Congratulations. Sounds like you're off to a good start. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> and I saw your uh, Facebook is still, I mean, your your website says you're still a brewery and planning, so it doesn't look like there's much up there. But on your Facebook, you list 13 beers that have received awards from 2012 till this year. Yes. How many of those did you work with in Platform? Uh, we So we've brewed two of our recipes at Platform so far. Uh, the first one is, it was formerly known as uh, North Coast Pale Ale, at Sandusky Pale Ale, and that one's won the most awards. And then the second one, the batch that we did was uh, Oh Snap, it's our holiday ale, and that beer gets launched on uh, November 28th, so on Friday, uh, Black Friday. So with that, with that beer, that one has won two gold uh, medals for veg spice category, uh, Wizard of Saz down in Akron, and then the Son of Brusilla uh, last year here in Cleveland. So did you change the name from North Coast Pale Ale to Sandusky because of trademark issues with North Coast Brewing Company in California? Uh, yeah, what well, basically I contacted North coast brewing company, uh, sent them an email saying, this is our plan. You know, we're a homebrew group right now. We're going through this, uh, incubator program. Um, our beer is called North coast pale ale and you know that we never intended it for <laughs> to be, uh, you know, professional beer at the time. So we continued to use that name and we always had it in the back of our mind. If we're ever going to do this on a professional level, we're probably going to have to change the name. So once I sent them that email, their, uh, president brewmaster, uh, Mark Ruderick contact us back. He sent the email, uh, personally back to us and, he was very polite and kind about it. And he said, you know, it's not necessarily a problem right now, but, you know, if you are to go big, which we never had the idea of going big either, there would be an issue. So at that point we thought, okay, no problem. What we'll do is just change it now before we start getting uh, press and publicity for going through platform. So we changed the name to Sandusky Pale Ale, which t- tilts our hand to where we plan on launching our brewery and in doing so it's helped us gain momentum with press and the, those sorts of things in the area that we're looking to open our brewery. So it, it, it was a good story. Um, how it all came about North coast was, uh, in reference to Sandusky, Ohio, which is on the North coast of Lake Erie. So we just further defined that by just titling the beer Sandusky instead of North coast. Perfect. Yeah, that seems like the safest way to go. So that's yeah. that makes me wonder: is, Are these sorts of issues covered in the apprentice program from Platform? And like, what kind of issues does it not cover? It uh, covers everything from you know, yeah, legal as part of the con- consulting that they provide. So they provide us resources to be able to connect with uh, attorneys and and people in the in the. Pr- professions in the different areas, accounting, um, and those sorts of things. So they cover pretty much everything. And as I mentioned, it's, it's sort of a choose your own adventure where they provide you with resources. You're not locked into having to use anyone that, that they're uh, recommending or lining up for you to talk to just to get an initial consultation. And then after you graduate from the program, what are the next steps that you're still left with to do after that? So through the program, we opened up our TTB uh, application already. We are working on getting off our paperwork in order to submit uh, our final application. So 
at that point will be deemed a, a brewery and planning. So through the program, we will have submitted our application to become uh, a brewery. After that, uh, just based upon how everything's functioned so far, Platform is going to continue to assist us in, in becoming a pro- professional brewery. Uh, uh, they There's no like timeline set on their consultation provided to us. It's in their best interest, basically, for us to become a professional brewery uh, as they will have a, an interest in our brewery as we go pro. Okay, great. Well, I want to respect your time today, so... Let's move on with these set questions that I ask every brewer and brewery owner. Sounds great. And I like to go real deep, real fast. So tell me, (laughs) in your short career so far, what's the biggest mistake you've ever made, either as a brewer or now as becoming a brewery owner? (laughs) Well, you know, on the homebrew level, I think you go through a lot of different uh, mistakes and you learn from them pretty quickly. Uh, one of the bigger ones that I went through, uh, I was doing a a brown ale, and I decided to prime it with some syrup. Uh, so it was going to have a maple maple brown uh, type of thing going on, and I didn't really measure the syrup very well. <laughs> so in doing so, uh, bottled it with the syrup. A couple weeks later, uh, my wife was down in the basement, and she hears some popping. Uh, <laughs> we had some bottle bombs in the basement, so I had to make sure I relieved the pressure on the rest of the bottles that were down there and uh, got rid of that, that batch, made sure that I don't do that again. <laughs> so does the glass actually blow up, or the top just pops off? Oh, yeah, the whole bottle just explodes so you, you got to be careful with uh, how you prime your bottles can be dang- your sh- <laughs> yeah it could be dangerous definitely yeah and when you're picking up i guess when you say you relieve the pressure you just pop the top off yeah with- and uh, basically just pour them out you can uh vent beers but at that point i was like i don't want any of these exploding on anyone so uh let's just get rid of this batch and start again did you have any beer grenades going off in your hand no, no, that would not be a good thing. So those were all covered in a box, and I knew there was a possibility of it just based upon my measurements of the sugar that was going in. So I made sure that they were covered in a box and in a safe place away from everyone. So you're still at the beginning stages, but it sounds like you're kind of on the fast track going through Platform Beer Co.'s program. Could you say if like, what is something, normally what I ask is if you could start your brewery over again, what would you do differently to do it better? What are some lessons that you've already learned going through this process? Uh, I think if, you know, something to do over, I would rather have started homebrewing earlier to get involved before there's such a uh, growth in craft beer at this point where, you know, there's always argument, is it oversaturated, uh, You know, are there too many breweries? What's the breaking point? And I really don't think that we're at that point, but uh, I I think that if we got in a little bit earlier, it would the outlook would have been a little bit better for starting our own place. Now, where we're looking to open our brewery, though, uh, there there's only one other brewery within ten miles, and then from there, it's like uh, Cleveland and. Toledo, uh, Worcester. So it's it the uh, from that ten miles out, it really leaps out to about forty, fifty miles out. So it's not an oversaturated market where we're looking to open. It's more of a seasonal market. So I think that's that's a good thing. But yeah, I would I would have rather started uh, home brewing a little bit earlier and getting in, getting involved into making our brewery go pro a little bit earlier. So you've mentioned like some things that take some some decisions that are looking out into the future, changing names of your beer just in case you have problems later on, and even just joining Platform's program to help you out in the future. What has been the best idea so far for your brewery? Uh, I think the best idea so far has been uh, 
joining with platform and and taking taking this opportunity to go pro I, like i mentioned i think that they've provided us with connections um with uh our investor uh which in turn helped us get locations and getting our word out there you know on the homebrew level we can only you know share our homebrew with friends and family on a much smaller scale but we first had our sandusky pale ale release uh it was pretty nice to be able to see so many people at the event trying our beer people you know we had a lot of friends and family there but we also had people come up to us that we never known and and mentioning you know nice job this is a solid beer and those sorts of things so uh, being able to reach uh, a broader audience to get a little bit more experience with, um, you know, having more feedback on our beers and, and getting exposure, uh, from the public. We've got a lot of press, especially in Sandusky, uh, with their local newspaper has run three or four articles on us. And I think the, the citizens in the community are already getting a, sick of us and we haven't even opened yet uh but uh, there are there is a lot of uh uh not just hype it's it's more about forming a nice community there with some of the things that are already going on and being a part of that it's our hometown we want to build it up and and have a cooperative atmosphere with some of the other restaurants and uh places that are already there making things happen so yeah, I saw the uh, the opening at, on Twitter and whatnot from platforms, uh, social media, and everything. It looked like a pretty fun event. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. It was a packed house. Uh, we had a great time, and I think Paul <laughs> Paul and the crew enjoyed it as well. It was good to see their idea as well as our idea finally come together and and be successful. And I think. We just need to continue that momentum, and hopefully, this next release will be just as exciting and and have be well attended as well. Yeah. So, how are you going to carry the momentum from the uh, the exposure that you're getting and the popularity that you're developing in Cleveland over to Sandusky, which is more than an hour drive away? Right. So, we are including some of the, the places that we're uh, trying to connect with, we, we connected with them to have Sandusky Pale Ale released at some of their bars and restaurants. So we took four Sixtals under the platform name um, to those establishments and had release parties at those different places as well. Just to try to be, you know, introduce our beer a little bit even though it's under the platform name, um, to the city. And those events were well attended as well. And now with this next beer release, we're having one of the food vendors or one of the restaurants, uh, Zinc Brasserie uh, from Sandusky, come up and provide the food service for our Christmas ale release, which will be on Friday, uh, just to keep that, those relationships going and keep the momentum going. And there is also that concern about, okay, we have these two beer releases at Platform. We're filing for our uh, brewer's license. We're not going to have it until a few months down the line. Our brewery's not going to be open for another few months. How are we going to, you know, connect the dots from end of the Platform until opening our doors? So we, with Platform, they are currently getting their 10-barrel system in to the brew house. So we brewed on the three barrel system. The 10 barrel system comes next week, uh, from Portland kettle works. And through that, we hope to be able to continue before we get our license to be able to continue to brew some beers under the, uh, the platform name. Once we get our licensing, we hope to be able to do some contract brewing through them and, uh, continue our momentum in that way before our doors open. Nice. That's going to be key. I think I didn't really realize that when I was speaking with Paul Benner before in episode 26, like the momentum that's really going to be built up 
at the platform location before anybody else who's coming after you through this program, they move on back to their home city or maybe even their home state. It's really cool how you guys are building relationships with the city that you're going to be at and you're, uh, have those relationships in place when you graduate from the apprenticeship program to build on after you move on to your own location. Yeah, it's been, it's been pretty interesting to see the interest level of some of those establishments. Uh, like I mentioned, we had a few stories come up in the newspaper and we were starting to get phone calls from other bars, you know, can we get some of your beer? Can we get some of your beer? And it's like, we only did six barrels this batch. We're going to try to get more. So it, it's nice. It's a nice situation to have where uh, people are contacting us to try to get some of the beer instead of us trying to, you know, would you put our beer on, you know, just for an event or whatever. Uh, so it's nice to have a little bit of that response where they really would like to have our beer come in to their establishments as well. Awesome. Well, so you guys are in demand even before you open <laughs> and you're not even open yet. So how are you going to define success? How will you, how will you know you succeeded? Well, we're working out our numbers, our projections, and, and we're doing all that right now. We are pretty decided upon where we should be for year one. Um, but we're going to, we hope to be able to sell you know, 60% in house, uh, at our location when we open and that would be 40% uh, distribution. But we know that also we are in a seasonal market where the summertime it's packed. Uh, there's Cedar point, which is a large amusement park, uh, in our backyard. So that draws a lot of people up to Lake Erie and in the Sandusky area. So the, in the summertime, we should have no problem meeting that, uh, percentage in the winter time, we just have to make sure that we are hitting those numbers. So I think our success will be determined by how well we handle uh, the winters and how much we can distribute if we have to flip our numbers, uh, distribution and in-house sales over you know half of the year or how we're going to go about that. But we are forming relationships now with other establishments and we're year one, we hope to cover the north coast of Ohio from Toledo to Cleveland and be able to distribute and hit those uh, establishments all along Lake Erie. Awesome. You got some great plans coming up. Yeah, well, <laughs> it takes a lot of work. And I think, you know, with doing platform, it helps you to show that you're serious about it. Uh, a lot of people say, uh, you know, home brewers all think that they can open a brewery. Um, which is not true. Some I know a lot of home brewers that have no interest in opening their own brewery. Uh, um, but also, you have to take the right steps to go about it the right way, and not just uh, fly by the seat of your pants. You know, I think with this program, it's showing that we're putting in the work uh, to do the things needed to create a successful brewery. And what's been your favorite memory since going through the incubator program? Um, the incubator program or, or j this past year has been pretty crazy as far as all the brewing uh, events. We were lucky enough to be able to go to Great American Beer Festival. We had a pro-am entry with Echo Brewing Company uh, out there. And so the four of us, my brother Zach, uh, Jared and Drew up for our two, my, my two cousins. It's the four of us in Fern Dock. And we all were able to go out to Denver for GABF. And, and we were making connections. And uh, Tony Corder from Columbus Brewing Company is from Sandusky as well. So he's one of our good friends. And he's, you know, showing us the ropes on everything, introducing us to hop brokers and and different people in the industry. And so we were at the, the award ceremony for GABF and, uh, Tony was the only representative from Columbus Brewing Company there. And they went through most of the awards. We were coming up to the, uh, IPA categories, which Tony and Columbus Brewing Company had, had entries in for, uh, American IPA and American double IPA. So, they go through announcing 
the IPA category and uh, third place comes up and it's, it's Bodie from Columbus Brewing Company and Tony's sitting with us and he's the only guy from Columbus there. So we're all going crazy for him. This category is what everybody wants to win and he's got a medal third place. Yeah. We're all happy for him. So he's going down to get the award for, uh, for Bodie and they start announcing the uh, double IPA. And they go through, I think Pliny got bronze, and then uh, I can't remember exactly who got the silver, but then Creeper came through with the gold, Columbus Creeper, and we were just going nuts up there. And he, with those two categories, getting two medals was pretty huge, and it was, I was glad to be able to be there to witness, uh, witness that in person. It was pretty cool. Well, wow, that's pretty rad. A lot of people who are still homebrewing want to one day be making the transition that you're making now. What could you tell an aspiring home brewer? What's the most important thing for someone starting a brewery to start doing tomorrow? I think the most important thing is to make connections. Um, this doesn't have anything to do with brewing itself, but it has a lot to do with how you are going to maneuver through the process of trying to start your own brewery, uh, find a mentor, uh, talk to brewers. Uh, it takes a long time to form those relationships because at first, sometimes uh, they might not take you as seriously as you think, as you take yourself. But as you put in the time and, and, you know, effort in those relationships and usually you find good people within the brewing in industry that will uh, give you the time to shoot ideas past them. You know, if you have questions, ask those questions. Um, join a homebrew group uh, club. I joined uh, Snobs here in Cleveland, Society of Northeast Ohio Brewers. And there are a lot of people in that group that know a lot about brewing. So whether it's, you know, just making connections within the industry uh, or getting connections within your homebrew clubs, I think the connections really help to, you to move your, yourself along and, and to learn from them. Great. Thanks for the advice. And now we have a question from one of our listeners, Jimmy Bat, who asks, how do you get your percent markup cost? And is there a typical 30% that you apply to everything or what's the general guideline? Well, right now we're not doing, we're trying to project for those uh, markup costs. A lot of it has to do with what your cost of goods are. Um, so that's part of the process that we are going through right now. As we're not selling anything right now, we don't have to, we're trying to be as accurate as, as we can be. And with platform they are providing us with a lot of that information because they're currently going through it themselves with their beers that they're selling. They're, they're selling not only their own beers, but they have a great guest tap list as well where they're um, able to get really great beers in, in the tap room. So a lot of it has to do, if you're, if you're talking about uh, markup on your own beer, a lot of it has to do with the, the cost of goods and, and the man hours that go into making that beer, that specific beer. All right, now it's time for happy hour. The next set of questions are a little lighter. We're going to get to know each other a little better, have some fun, and get inside the industry. Let's get through this, Kyle. All right. Cans or bottles? Uh, the for me, it depends on the beer. I have no objection to cans. I have no objection to bottle, but certain beers I would rather have in a can, you know, take it on the boat, take it on the golf course. Uh, some I would rather have in a bottle, you know, sitting on the dining room, uh, at the dining room table. Uh, that's just my preference, I guess. Oh, it depends on the occasion or it depends on yes. where you're going. Yes. What's the most challenging beer you've ever made? Hmm talked about one what? earlier is that the same one yeah i know i would say uh i would say the coffee porter i've done a number of times and i've had really good successes and i've had some that haven't turned out and and a lot has to do with when you put the coffee in and what type of coffee you, there's a lot of variables involved with with that uh recipe so i would say that one is uh 
I think we've got it nailed down now uh, to when we're going to, you know, put the coffee in, how we're going to put it in, you know, what part of the process you put it in. So that one, getting those variables in, in line was a little bit tough. Yeah. Somebody was asking about adding those kinds of gre- ingredients. When do you put in the coffee? For us, we've determined that it's it's best as a, a toddy style uh, for a day or two before you actually right at the end of fermentation uh, when before you put it into kegs or bottles. So the last step before racking or putting rack into keg uh, or putting it into a bottle or, or can. Or can, okay. I should mention that one of my friends has a mobile canning line through mobile canning systems here in Cleveland, Buckeye Canning. He actually, when he was setting up his line, he let us come over with some of our homebrew. And so we had a keg, our canned homebrew uh, around Cleveland. Not too many people get to say that. Wow, that's awesome. Did it have the Ferndock label on it? Yeah, we made some little labels, uh, but, you know, not the official, like, uh, printed on can labels or anything like that. But uh, it was it was pretty cool to have some American stout in the 16-ounce cans. Sweet. If you're going to make a five-gallon batch at home this weekend, what beer would you make? Probably Sandusky Pale Ale. Uh, we brewed that probably 25, 26 times now, and... and uh, we like to brew that. It goes fast. So that's what I would brew. Tell me one beer style that you think will be gaining more attention. Huh, that's a tough one. Well, I think we've seen the ghost style is really getting attention. Um, I think it's going to grow a little bit more this year. Um, there's, I, I really enjoy the style. It's a lighter, uh, lighter in alcohol and i think this coming summer you're going to see a, a lot more of that style can you suggest a book for our audience that will help them succeed in opening a brewery yeah i think the book that everyone thinks of uh when trying to start a brewery it's the starting your own brewery uh, by dick cantwell i picked that one up and i've been i've read through it a couple times already um and then there's uh, Brewing Up a Business uh, by Sam Gaglione. Uh, so you have a lot of books out there about opening up breweries, but those two, I think, are are the ones to go to. For me, I'm more of a hands-on learner, <laughs> but I think that's what Plum platform does well is provides you with with the classroom instead of it just being about a book it's it's you're living it you're you're walking through the steps um it's it's very tangible the you know being in the brew house and seeing how the operations work and when do you have to move this beer and when does it have to be ready so that we have it on tap to sell in the tap room um those are things that i think you you can't get by reading through a book. Um, there are things that you have to kind of be uh, put into that position to be able to try out those th- techniques. You got to be able to apply the knowledge. Exactly. And that's what helps with having this whole platform uh, involvement. Tell me something that you're really excited about right now, and then we'll close up the brew house for the night. What I'm excited about right now, oh, there's there's a lot going on. Uh, trying to manage all the social media and get all of our merchandise in order and uh, get our lease signed, get our TTP approval, um, get our equipment in order. There's a lot going on, and everything kind of runs all simultaneously. You can't have this without that and vice versa, so... Just keeping everything uh, moving along, keeping uh, in contact with our investment group and our lawyers, and, you know, all that sort of thing. So I, I think we're we're kept on our toes a lot through this whole process, and I think we won't be able to stop and come up for air until you know we actually are a few years in after opening the brewery. So it's it's a 
it's a very exciting time for us. Uh, we're having a lot of fun along the way. It's not all business, but a lot of it is the business side uh, as well. So you got it's a yeah, lots of exciting things going on for you. You're at an exciting time. <laughs> I wish you well. Thanks for sharing us with us uh, what you've learned so far. So tell us how we can stay in touch with you, and then we'll set this episode aside to ferment. It sounds great. Well, we're, we, you can find us on ferndockbrewing.com. We're on Twitter, ferndockbrewing, uh, facebook.com slash ferndockbrewing. Our website will be up and running here shortly. Right now, it just links you over to our Facebook and Twitter. Uh, and we should have some merchandise for sale pretty soon off of our website uh, after uh, Black Friday. So we'll have merchandise up there, shirts, hats, all that sort of thing available to the public. Thanks again, Kyle Roth, for being on Microbrewer Podcast. Thanks for sharing your stories and your advice about starting and operating a successful brewery. So listeners, I want to encourage you to check out the show notes for the books and other resources we talked about in this episode. Please go to the show notes so you can get in touch with Kyle and thank him for being on the show. There are links to get in touch with Kyle Roth and Ferndock Brewing Company at microbrewer.com slash session 39 and don't forget to check out microbrewer.com slash support microbrewer and see how you can support microbrewer podcast it's microbrewer.com slash support microbrewer and the contest to win some free coasters for microbrewer podcast you have to leave a rating and review in itunes for microbrewer podcast I'll pick five winners at the end of the month. So this episode is airing December 9th, 2014. So I'll pick a winner on December 31st, New Year's Eve. So if you're listening to this after that, sorry, you no longer have a chance to enter the contest, but I'll pick five random winners and mail you some coasters. Okay, so here's what you need to do. Go into iTunes, find a microbrewer podcast, and leave your rating and review for the show. If you don't know how to leave a rating and review in iTunes, you can check out the videos I left on Microbrewer's YouTube uh, channel. And you can find links to that on the resources page, microbrewer.com slash resources. But anyway, leave your rating and review. Leave honest feedback. I really want to know what's working and how the show can improve. Now, here's the key part. This is what you need to do so I know that you're the one who left the review because sometimes the iTunes username is kind of funky and I can't see that it was you. So after you leave the review, it doesn't show up right away. So what you have to do is go into your account info for iTunes, scroll to the bottom under settings, and then next to rating and reviews, click manage. Okay, so right at the top is going to be your most recent review your review of Microbrewer podcast. So take a screenshot of that and make sure you get the whole window where it says manage my ratings and reviews and stuff. So this is the way that I'm going to know you left the review. You didn't just take a screenshot of someone else's review and email that to me. Email me the screenshot at nathan at microbrewer.com. And remember, microbrewer is spelled M I C R O. B-R-E-W-R. Drop the last E. So it's Nathan at microbrewer.com without the last E. Awesome, guys. Cool. I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of reviews you leave. Thanks again for listening. And until next time, support your local brewery. And we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to Microbrewer Podcast with Nathan Pierce. We'll see you right here next time at microbrewer.com. If you want more resources for starting a craft brewery, check out microbrewer.com, M-I-C-R-O-B-R-E-W-R.com. If you want to become a Cicerone certified beer server, check out beerexamschool.com for free study guide and flashcards for the certified beer server exam, beerexamschool.com.